A lot of us want to pursue research when we are in college, but we have no idea how to go about it. What should be the topic of our research? What resources will I need? Whom should I approach to guide me? Can I do it alone or do I need a team? And all these questions prevent us from exploring the field of research. Hi everyone, I am Neha Agrawal. I'm the founder of Wise Up Communications and in this video we're going to talk about the step-by-step -step process you need to follow to begin your research. So without further delay, let's get started. The first thing you need to do is find an area of research and there are different ways how you can go about it. One way is to explore your interest. You must have studied a lot of subjects in college till now. See if any of those subjects interest you. Otherwise, you must be following some technological advancements online. For example, data science, artificial intelligence, machine learning. See if any of those areas interest you or not. Otherwise, you can also go online and search for some hot topics of research in the field of your study. And then you can see which topics among that interests you. And based on that, you can finalize an area where you would like to conduct your research on. Now let's answer the question, should you work alone or in a group? Well, both have their pros and cons. If you work in a group, then your responsibilities get divided, your workload gets reduced and you finish the project in lesser time. But some of the drawbacks of working in a group is that sometimes it leads to conflict and you might not always get to work on what you want. On the other hand, working alone is also great because you do the entire process from starting to finish on your own. And so the learning that you have is next level. But the drawback is that, that it takes more time and sometimes working alone can be exhausting because you don't have anybody to share the load with. So if you do find a team who's equally motivated as you, then great. Otherwise, you can pursue research on your own and have fantastic results as well. Now, once you have an idea of the area of research that interests you, the next thing you need to do is see the kind of resources which are available. If you study in a college with good research facilities, then professors are generally involved in many different kind of research fields. So all you need to do is approach a professor and see if they have a research project for you to work on. Personally, I would suggest that this is the best way to move forward, especially if it's your first research project, because when you're in the beginning and you're just starting out with research, you will need a lot of guidance and professors can help you and give direction to your research. If you come from a college which has limited research facilities, then professors there are also not that motivated to pursue good quality research. And also say, for example, you choose a research area which you're interested in, but there are no research facilities available for that in your college. Then choosing this kind of topic also will not help. So what should you do in such a case? Well, one way is to find out what kind of research facilities are available in your college and then choose a topic where you will be able to use those facilities. So here what you can do is approach the faculty who manages those research facilities. It's not necessary that you have to work with them, but they will be able to at least guide you as to what kind of research is possible under those circumstances. Now let's talk about a situation where there are absolutely no research facilities available. In such a case, you should not pursue any form of experimental research where tools, equipment, chemicals or research facilities are needed. You can always pursue computer-based research. A lot of people conduct this kind of research nowadays where they simulate everything on a software and prove their research hypothesis. So what you need to understand here, guys, is that research doesn't always mean conducting hands-on experiment using fancy research equipment. It can always be done on a computer and the kind of results that you get or the kind of journals where you get your research published in will be at par with that of experimental research. Now, most of us want to pursue research for the end goal of getting published, right? But if all the above sounds very challenging to you, then it's not necessary to conduct research to be able to publish a research paper. You can always do that by writing and publishing a review paper instead. So let me take a short clip from my previous video to make you understand what a review paper actually means. If I explain it to you in very simple words, a review paper is like a summary of other research papers. 
what you are doing is you're consolidating the information of other research papers and presenting that information to the reader. You are not conducting any research of your own here. But what you're doing is that along with the summary, you are also providing your interpretation and analysis of what other researchers have done. So what I want to make clear for all young researchers is that a review paper is a great way to step into the field of research. It will teach you how to read research papers, how to conduct a literature survey, how to consolidate your learnings and present it in a professional way. Another important thing I would like to share with you is that guidance is very important, especially if you're conducting research for the first time. This guidance can come from professors, professionals working in companies, masters, PhD or postdoc students as well. They will at least be able to guide you if you're going wrong, clear your doubts and confusion and bring you on the right track. So make sure that you have a mentor or a guide to help you whenever you're conducting research. So now that you've watched this video and are all set to begin your research, I would encourage you to watch two other videos to get started. The first one is on how to choose a research topic and the second one is on how to search and download research papers. These videos will help you start with your literature survey and begin your research project successfully. So guys, that's all I wanted to share with you today. If you wish to learn everything from how to start your research project all the way till publishing a research paper, you can join me for my 8-hour certification course on research writing. In this course, you will learn everything about how to write each and every section of a research paper, how to choose journals, how to do citations and references properly, and finally, how to get yourself published. If you wish to learn more, you can check out the link in description. And now, thank you so much for watching this video and I wish you have a fantastic research career ahead.